is up, everybody. Welcome to the final Hook Shots podcast of the year 2019. I am your host, Joe Cermelli, uh, and this is airing on uh, December 24th, Christmas Eve, which probably means that you are not listening to this on Christmas Eve uh, because you have better, more important things to do, like uh, glaze the ham blow the snow off the nativity on the front lawn so baby Jesus ain't freezing out there, uh, prepping the futon for the in-laws baking that last batch of bell-shaped sugar cookies with the M&M in the center and uh, running out to hand a bunch of scratch-off lottery tickets to the mailman. And that's fine. Okay, You listen when you have time. That's the beauty of podcast, is it not? Um, obviously, I didn't record this on Christmas Eve because uh, I'm doing all uh, all that same shit. You know, uh, I actually recorded this, um, just, you know, full disclosure, on December 18th, which is my birthday, which for all the people on my Facebook page that said, happy birthday, I hope your wedding aligned today, uh, that's big negative, Ghost Rider. I was recording a podcast. Um, so factor in the record date with the drop date with the date you've actually tuned in on, and it's some serious, like, Matrix shit, man. Blue pill or red pill, by golly, I can't even decide anymore. Anyway, I hinted in our last podcast that we'd be doing something festive for our Christmas Eve episode, and uh, last year, uh, my dear friend and longtime video series co-host Captain Eric Kerber and I got together to talk about the best and worst fishing-related Christmas gifts um, we've gotten over the years. So that's been done. Okay, that's that's null and void. But I got to thinking, uh, you know, you're not going to hear from me again uh, in this format until 2020, barring like, you know, a meteor strike or something between now and the next time I, I do one of these. So I, I thought we'd have a little fun uh, this year uh, with New Year's resolutions. Now, fun fact, I suck uh, mad ass at staying true to New Year's resolutions, so much so that I kind of gave up on making them, which is terrible, but at the same time, like, I'm not alone. Come on. You don't, you don't, <laughs> you don't keep up your New Year's resolutions either. You still supersize your number six at McDonald's, just like me, and you only use your Stairmaster to reach the top of the liquor cabinet. OK, point being, we're not we're not talking about overall life resolutions in this episode because those are just basically depressing. All right. We're talking about fishing resolutions. OK. And while perhaps I, I in the past, at least, have not made a cognizant effort to make a, a, a fishing resolution per se, I do try to set like a yearly fishing goal for myself. All right. And it doesn't have to be something major. It can it can be something pretty simple. And for 2020. OK, I'm going on record now and saying that uh, this is my my fishing resolution. I'm going to spend more time wading smaller streams, particularly ones that I, I, I grew up fishing for trout. OK, now that may sound silly, but hear me out. OK, like many of you, like that was my childhood. That was my introduction to trout fishing. And, and, and when I was a kid. You know, trout fishing meant heading up to North Jersey and, and fishing for stockers and a whole bunch of different rivers. And then, you know, when I got older and sort of found myself, right, got a driver's license, my, my buds and I started exploring the Bushkill and the Broadhead and a bunch of other streams in the Poconos and Pennsylvania that were like, you know, two hours away, day trippable. And then little by little, we, we graduated to some overnighters, to some of the limestoners out in western PA, uh, north central PA. But, you know, somewhere along the way, um, I, I essentially lost my motivation to fish those rivers and to wade for trout, right? And, and there are several reasons for that. And, and the biggest, straight up, which should come as no surprise, is that I got mixed up in the drift boat crowd, man. You know, uh, <laughs> my list of buddies at some point had had upticked, you know, the guys with with clacks and hides and I bought a raft of my own and now more recently traded up to a hard boat of my own and floating just became my trout fishing. It was just synonymous. If 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 I'm trout fishing, I'm doing it on a boat. 
And once you see the power of covering water and how many more fish you catch doing that, for me, it was like, well, shit, that's, uh, that's all I want to do now. You know, why do I want to wade, you know, walk three miles to catch two fish when I can float 10 and catch 20? Simple math. It's math, people, right? Um, and then two, I, 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 I became somewhat of a wild trout snot. And I hate to admit that, but I, I became the guy that wanted wild trout or no trout. And I want to kick my own ass for saying that because for all those years, I had such a blast chasing stalkers. And it's like, oh, so like that was actually lame and no fun. No, it was hella fun. And it would still be fun if I would just like let myself do it. Just get my ass out there and and do it. And 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 the the final sort of nail in that coffin, which is the one I think we can all relate to, is simply time. Right? Pure and simple. You grow up, you have a house, you have kids, and you just don't have the same time that you once did. So you want to maximize that time when you do have it, right? I've got three days to fish. Am I crashing at the old motel I used to in college to chase stalkers on the broadhead? Or am I pulling the boat up to the upper Delaware to rip streamers for big wild browns? It's an easy answer, right? Now, while I can't say that my answer to what I would do with three days question will change in 2020, I do vow to spend more time waiting for trout because the truth is, right, there are stalker streams very close to my house, like within a few miles of here, that I just pay no mind to anymore. It's like it's like they don't even exist. And when I have the time to fish local, I, I will always opt for smallies or snakeheads or something else. And I, I really plan to make an effort to hit those streams for trout because I, I have never forgotten that magic feeling. And I know some of you can relate of finding those fish away from where they're stocked. That was the fun, right? Forget the community hole and you go rogue and you walk a little further or you go to a stretch that's that's not actually a stock stretch and you you pick those one or two fish away from where the masses are are trying to catch them that's what i used to love about fishing stock streams you know even when we used to hike around in the poconos there were always you know the on on the bush kill there was the famous piano pool and the chapel pool and there would always be guys in the piano pool and the chapel pool and we would walk right by them and and pick fish you know in between all these known spots and that was what i used to really love okay and to to add motivation to my resolution here i will also add that um my daughter, who is a little fishing machine, she will be just old enough this spring that I think it's time to graduate from the pond to the stream, okay? She is certainly not afraid to get dirty and wet and soggy, okay? And I think I can, I can stick her in a little pair of waders now, which is going to be a f***ing disaster, but it'll be funny. Um, and, you know, if she's part of the vehicle that rekindles my fire... For the local trout scene, man, I am good with that. So we'll see if I'm a huge liar or if I stick to my guns. But uh, waiting for trout, fishing some of the streams that I grew up fishing, making more time to do that, and not always trying to get on a drift boat, that is my 2020 fishing resolution, okay? But here's what I've done, all right? Who cares? That's just me. I'm just one guy, okay? I had a little fun. Right. And I picked up the phone and called a whole bunch of past podcast guests, all of which, of course, are, are, are great friends of mine. OK. And I asked them what their New Year's fishing resolution is. But the hook, right, is, is that I put them all on the spot. I didn't tell any of them why I was calling. Most of them did not even realize that they were being recorded for a podcast at first, okay? Which means that, like, you know, because we're not in, like, a, like a sit-down scheduled environment, it's like some of them are driving, one had just left the DMV, one of them was at Taco Bell, 
Some were thrown into a tailspin of awkwardness, but they all answered, and it's quite the mashup of resolutions, and I was actually very impressed, right? Some some really good answers. In fact, some answers that made me go, oh, man, I need to tack that onto my list of resolutions. That's a good one. So let's kick off this Jerky Boys style call fest, all right, with our dear friend Brian Wise of Fly Fishing in Ozarks, victim number one, how much butter is he going to put in the net in 2020? <laughs> Hey man, how's it going? Hey, what's up, Brian? How you doing, dude? Good. Okay, you're my first victim. You are you are on the spot being uh, re- recorded for a podcast right now. Oh, great. Here's the question, okay? What is your 2020 New Year's fishing resolution? Whoa! Oh, that's easy. <laughs> is it? Oh, you know, okay. For- for for just a second, I was like, "Man, I have no idea." But no, <laughs> I, I, I'm going to get a thirty a thirty inch brown this year. Yeah, it's going to happen myself. Myself. Wow, that's a that's a that's a ballsy bold one. <laughs> I mean, if why why do anything but a ballsy you know <laughs> New Year's Eve? I mean. Yeah, I can waste my time and say, oh, you know, I'm going to get like a 22. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so does it have to come from somewhere specific or just anywhere? Is it like it's got to be a 30 from one place? Man, I'll take a 30 from a ditch in Kansas. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you actually have any like wheels in motion to go somewhere where like you really think you have a better shot of a 30? Well, uh, seeing as my... My my oldest son will start his senior year in high school mm-hmm. uh, in 2020. Right. Um, I'm going to take him, like, uh, I'm taking him up north muskie fishing. Um, but, you know, I, I could count, like, a 30-inch muskie. No, no, I can't do that. No, 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 dude. <laughs> I this can't is, do that. This is what I've always said about muskie, right? I haven't caught one yet, and really, I only want one. Like, I don't need a lifelong commitment to that. I just want one. But it has to be over 40 or else it won't really count. Like, my one can't be a 32-inch muskie. You know what I mean? I totally agree. Totally agree. <laughs> that's, like, that's like catching an, an eight-inch rainbow and calling it good. Yeah. You know, yeah. it, it, a hundred percent. So, dude, I probably have asked you this before, but what is your biggest today? How many more inches do you have to go to hit 30? My biggest is a 28. Oh, okay. So you're only two inches shy then. Right. And it's, and it, but that 28 has been like, wow. Like I've had, I've probably had half a dozen 28 fish north of 28 in my boat since I caught mine, but none of them were mine. So, right. right. And, yeah. and no, no clients have ever broken thirty. I've had, yeah, yeah, I've had two break thirty. I have a a thirty and a thirty two. So, wow. okay. yeah. Well, then this is this is your year, man. It is. It's happening. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's probably a bunch of you out there that think that like musky on the fly uh, would be a good resolution for me, but no, no. No, no, no. But I did mean what I said there with Brian, that uh, someday when and if that happens, as long as it's over 40 inches, I'm done. I'm done. That is not going to be a future JC addiction. It it will happen at some point, but my I, I, I would not have enough commitment to that project to make it an official <laughs> New Year's resolution. Anyway, who are we calling next? How about the legend... Crazy Alberto Knee, okay? Surf fisherman extraordinaire, northeast striper scene legend, now posted up down in Florida, banging on everything from giant tarpons to uh, backwater exotics, owner of Tactical Anglers. You all know Alberto. He's also uh, quite the uh, sushi chef, okay? Post a lot of of, um, beautiful sashimi. So uh, we we threw old Al on the spot, and I was curious about this one because, um, I don't know, he's a pretty badass angler, man. He's kind of, like, done everything. So, you know, resolutions often deal with, like, things you need to improve on, okay? So I wasn't sure which route he was going to go. 
Uh, and it turns out the route that he went was um, one that I can totally get behind uh, and is, is kind of a long-standing resolution of my own. Hello? There he is, Mr. Nee. What's going on, dude? What's going on? What's happening? Nothing. And by the way, <laughs> happy birthday. What's the honor? Are you calling me on your birthday? <laughs> I'm working on my birthday, man. Um, yeah. So, no, we got to tell everybody what just happened. I just texted Alberto and said you got five minutes, and he called me. But um, I, I had to call you back here with the, the podcast stuff because we're having a little fun today, and I'm putting some of my best friends on the spot, right? So here's the question. Okay. Here's, here's the question of the day. Uh, and you are. Well, I have to answer it first of all. Yes, you have to answer it. You are a man of extraordinary fishing talent, so I'm very, uh, I'm very curious about this one. What? All right, I'll give you the five dollars later when I see you. Okay. <laughs> all right, so he- so here we go on the spot with Alberto Nee. What would be your 2020 fishing New Year's resolution? Catch a monster snakehead. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. okay. So, uh, <laughs> you know what, dude, so that's, that's one of mine, right? So, so what, what's a monster? What, what is defined as a monster? Uh, well, it's, it, it's, it's a two part thing. Um, a double digit on a fly rod. Oh, okay. Okay. That's, now, that's what I want. Does it have to be uh bullseye in the South or Northern or does it not matter? Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean, I've gotten uh, uh, quite a few with a fly rod, but it can't seem to break that double-digit number. Have you? you know, I love the challenge. You know that. I mean, you gotta love the challenge. That that thump is all. That's it. You know. Well, of, <laughs> of course, of course. And I, I think, I mean, have you caught double-digit snakes not on the fly? Yes, I have. You have. See, I, I have yes, not. I have. I have, I have not caught a true double-digit yet. So, like, one of my. Well, it's funny. I can't even call it a New Year's resolution. Because it's like my resolution every year. Every year I'm trying to catch a damn double digit snake <laughs> up here. So to say it's like uh-huh. my 2020 resolution is kind of kind of weird. But um, right. so okay. So how do you do that? Is it just more time put in, or are you like trying to figure out places where that's more likely to happen? Because I'm slowly being more convinced the more I fish locally. Like I want mine super local. I'm not sure if it exists here or not. You know. So. Um, and, uh, this on the small sidetrack, I've been doing a lot of homework and checking out spots, and I've also been snooping around. And by the way, I do know where you and Eric fish is. I know, <laughs> I know. We've had other podcasts where you rub in my face that you, know, you supposedly know all our spots. My New Year's resolution is to make sure you don't get any more information out of me about anything ever. <laughs> and my new revolution would be, uh, you know, get you to be more open about it. How's that? <laughs> well, we, you know what? I, I know. So you've been making uh, some fairly regular trips up north, not as far as, as me, but, I mean, you've been doing a lot of, of northern snakehead targeting. Um, oh, yes, I have. And yes. I, 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 I'd be, I'd be more impressed with your resolution if it was on home waters down where you live in Florida. Because correct me if I'm wrong, like I feel like it's harder to find a double digit bullseye than a double digit. I have to northern. agree with that. Yeah, I, I, I absolutely have to agree with you on that because the uh, the southern bullseye they seem to be a little more isolated, right? A little more challenging, and and to be quite honest, there's, there are not as many. As it will, where on the northern uh, snakeheads, they seem to come in, in relatively large schools. Yeah, and finding them, uh, you, you know, I do have a couple spots, and, and to be honest, and the reason why I, I've been to the northern part, I'm mean, traveling north just for those uh, northern snakeheads, and I had one, hands down, bar none was a behemoth. Right. It broke my line. Right. And that's and I saw that fish and I am constantly going back to just try to connect with her again. Well, dude, yeah. it's it's funny. I, I, I feel like I might have laid eyes legitimately on one local that that would have broke ten, but it was in a position where I could it was actually mating. And you know when they're mating they're not eating anything. They're just rolling around on the right. surface. They don't they don't really eat. But the funny thing right. about the Northerns like we had a lot of fish this year in like the six seven pound range, and when you right. first set the hook on those fish, like and they roll over, you think everyone right. is eleven pounds. 
Like they look so big when they first go, and then you get it up to the boat, and you're like, man, that fish is not nearly as big <laughs> as I thought it was when it hit. But um, So it's got to be on the fly rod, huh? That's the real resolution. And the, yeah, that's my resolution. It's got to be on the fly rod. And what's the biggest yeah. one you have on the fly rod so far? Maybe about pushing maybe seven at best. Okay, okay. And that's you know, southern? So I, 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 uh, that is the southern and northern. Okay, so both around seven pounds. Yeah. So considering yeah. you are such a culinary guy, I see you're always like making sushi and things. Uh, when you mm-hmm. get when you get that double digit on the fly rod, are you putting the whole damn thing in the in the deep fryer or the wok or something? Oh hell no, that's going to go back. <laughs> She's going back. She's going back in the drinks and let everybody else dream about that fish and let them go to that spot and try to catch her. It is so funny because I actually met Al like 15 years ago. And at the time, he was still living in the Northeast and like was just this big striper machine. And I feel like the resolution back then would have been like 60 pound striper from the surf. But now, I mean, his love of the the Florida backwater exotics, like we are such kindred spirits in the snakehead thing, which is funny because I could never, even in my prime, like run to his level uh, in the striper surf. But like we can go, we can go toe to toe on some snakes and uh, double digit on the fly. That's a good one. I don't aspire to that yet. I just want a double digit period. Doesn't have to be on the fly. I'm gonna, I want to get one just on gear first, and then maybe down the line we'll uh, we'll worry about the fly side of that whole deal. But that was a pretty good one. I like that. 10-pound snake on the fly for Crazy Al. So uh, we got to rope curbs into this. We got to call uh, E-Rock Kerber. Um, so we're, we're going we're gonna to ring him now. And um, I do believe he's just leaving the Pier 1 Imports or uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. And, uh, you know, he's in, in the hoe, in the Tahoe. So um, let, let's talk to Curbs. And uh, I like his resolution a lot. It's I, This is another one that I share in. I don't have the means to make it happen on my own, okay? Uh, but uh, with friends, perhaps with Curbs. Perhaps in 2020, we will we will see his resolution come to fruition together. Should all the greatest be forgotten Hello. Yo, bro. What's up? What are you doing? Christmas shopping? No. Sort of. Kind of. No? You just... Did... Yeah, Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Curbs just texted me and said, I just got your present in some board game. What, what's it called? I got to look at the text again. I hope you re- Oh, no, that's your, birth- that's your birthday present. It's uh, a, a, a meme party game for people who love memes. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I, I hate memes and I never have parties. So, um, yeah. I know. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, so well, here, are you what you think? I want to get you something you'd like. <laughs> no, I know that's kind of how we roll. Anyway, uh, here's what I'm doing today. I'm calling uh, all my best friends and I'm putting them on the spot, and I'm asking you what is your 2020 fishing resolution? Really? Yeah. 2020. Yeah. What's your New Year's resolution old- tied to fishing? Ah. Uh. I guess I'm just going to carry over from last year and catch a wahoo in the Jersey Canyons. I've not done that yet, and it's killing me. That's uh, that's a good one. That's so, a good one. I would I would like to catch a wahoo. Actually, trying to catch a wahoo. So okay, so we, I feel like we need to explain that to the people a little bit. So wahoo, right? For anybody who doesn't know, they're like kind of southern warm water deal, but in the summer, right? Like they show up off of Jersey, but I don't yeah, know. They're they're, like, they're, they're they're here, like they're here in the summer when the water pushes in and you get that more that warm eddies and all that. Sometimes they're mixed in with the tuna and the marlins, but they're like ghosts, dude. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I see one or two every year with my own eyes, like pot hopping for my heat. Like, I know they're there. I know they're there. You know what I mean? And I've been high speeding like the bullies do in Florida for two years now, like with live moves and how they do it down there. I've been trying, trying to get one. And I've, we've caught shit. We've caught tuna doing it. We've caught marlins doing it. We've caught everything but, you know, like we've caught mahi. But like, I have not stuck one who high speed in Jersey yet. And that's what I wanted. To. Yeah. There's only a couple guys who seem to have it kind of dialed here. And like, even in my experience last season, 
out there. Like you'll be trolling tuna and you'll have a Wahoo cut across and like rip one of your spreader bars in half. But then as soon as you put out wire and like real Wahoo lures, they don't touch it. Like they won't touch that stuff. So dude, I had them biting, I had them biting cedar plugs off one day, like right in the wash every time. Put one in, put cedar plug, 200 pound leader, bang, going, you know? So then it was like, all right, I'm going to put my Wahoo lure out. Nope. Didn't even touch it. Oh man, and I, I I actually gave you some really nice Wahoo lures a few years ago, didn't I? Yeah, I know. That was one. Of, that was a present I got from you. I liked. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I feel like I was owed a free trip for those that I never cashed in or something like that, wasn't I? I don't know. That expired. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that expired. <laughs> huh? That's off the date. table. <laughs> Expiration dates only last like you know six months around here. Oh man. Well that's a good one. That's a good so far you're on you're on trend with everybody else. Everybody is throwing out like something that they want to catch, which I guess I, I kinda should have saw that coming. Like nobody said like I want to get better at spay casting. It's all like thick yeah, fish that they want to catch. Good on that. <laughs> I know, I've seen you with a regular fly rod, let's not even go to spay, you know? You know, there there's a bunch of other things I'd like to do too, but like I don't know, that one's just got that one's the one that I don't know. I just can't, I can't seem to, to to get, and that's the one I really want. Well, I'm sorry it didn't work out last year. Maybe this is the year. Maybe we'll do it together in 2020. And uh, man, that'll be like some sashimi for the ages because wahoo is just one of the most delicious f-ing fish ever. Yeah, and I'll think about it. Maybe I'll give you just a little discount because I do use one of the lures. Should all the greatest be forgotten? So the Jersey Wahoo for Kerber, I am down with that, okay? And some of you guys, you know, it sort of obviously depends on where you live, but you got to understand that, like, where we are here in the northeast in Jersey and north of here, you know, like Wahoo down south and in the Gulf and in Florida, it's like, it's a very common thing. You know, the Bahamas, they're there all the time. But for us, that's one of those weirdos that, like, you just get this little window of opportunity to get one when the right water is here in the summer, you know, like, um, believe it or not, like, people occasionally catch barracuda in Jersey, and we get cobia, and every once in a while, somebody sees or catches a tarpon, and there's even, like, um, there's even some redfish starting to return to South Jersey, and, like, Jersey redfish is another one of my sort of bucket listy things, okay? Not quite a resolution, but something I want to do. So I'm down with that, the Jersey Wahoo, because I know it can happen. It's just not as commonplace, and um, it's a pretty cool achievement for the guys who have done it around here, um, and it's not that unattainable. It's just one of those things where it's, it's hard to pull yourself away from the main targets, those tuna and things that, that are there. You went through all the effort to get out there, you know, it's hard to pull yourself away from those just to target the Wahoo, but it can be done, and I really dug that resolution. So now we're going to call my boy Jim Fee, who who was one of our, our, our earliest podcast guests, did a, uh, a, a terrific podcast with us on, on what it takes to be a, a, a ghost of the surf scene. Okay, Jim has several 50-pound stripers. To his credit... Um, and his resolution surprised me a lot. Okay. It started off kind of weird. Okay. I caught Jim way off guard with this one. I, I, Jim, I'm sorry. I caught you a little off guard. That was kind of the point. That was kind of the fun of the whole thing. Um, but like we sort of like went through some maybe resolutions and then got down to one that I was like, no kidding. You haven't done that before. Um, which is, which is interesting. Okay. When you hear what it is. Uh, considering Jim lives up on the Cape in a very salty, uh, salty region of the country, but um, this one, this this one, he's gonna do. This one's just, this is just a matter of right place, right time. And um, man, I'll tell you, we, we don't have that much time to fish together because we don't live close. But uh, I would just be, just be tickled if I was there to see this resolution come to fruition on uh, on a boat here in Jersey. Jim, here we go. Jim Fee. Go. Happy Christmas. Up, Hi. You're Happy uh Christmas to you. You're <laughs> you're on the you're on the Hookshots Podcast Airwaves right now, just to warn you. Um <laughs> so, a little surprise drop in. Yeah, a little surprise drop in with Jim today. We're we're calling uh we're calling all our friends. 
Um, and you're one of our friends. I feel like you're mentioned more than uh, than a lot of people within the podcast. So it felt only right to call you today to rope you into the fun and ask you on the spot, Jim Fee, what is your 2020 New Year's fishing resolution? Ooh. Ooh. The, the easy one is always fish more. But well, that's kind of that's yeah. kind of so so I so I'll I'll challenge you a step further. Okay. Everybody I've talked to so far has thrown out a fish. It's like I want to catch a this size this or a this size that. But 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 you're deeper than that, Jim. I know it. So so think about it. Fishing resolution. I want to fly fish more this year. Okay. I definitely want to fly fish more this year. I'd love to catch a twenty pound striper on the fly. I've never done that. Okay, Both that's a good shore. one. I've never done it from so, so twenty pound striper on the fly from shore. I think that because I've never caught a muskie. Would love to catch one of those, but you're you're trying to go a step deeper than than just the. Oh, you could say what fish. you could say whatever you want. I don't care. This is this is this is your five minutes on the floor of the podcast, Jim. Not mine. <laughs> uh, what else? It's no longer catch a fifty from the surf. We know that. No, that well, that's every year. I want to get one. Uh, you know, that, that starts. Fresh every season, right? So yeah, that, that's but that kind of goes without saying. I'd love to catch a fifty pounder this year. So what? Um, what makes you want to fly fish more? I, I was getting really into it for a couple of years, and this year I have more nicer fly fishing equipment than I've ever had, and I use it less and less. It seems like you know, gotcha. I, I, and uh, you know, I actually it, even more than a twenty pound striper on the fly, an albie on the fly. I think would be even better. Have you not caught an albie on the fly? I've never caught an albie on the fly. No, no, I, no I kidding. All the gear. No, man. I, and I threw into some. They, most of my albie fishing I do from a kayak or from shore, and fly fishing from, from a kayak is just. It's the worst thing ever. I hate it. I, I did. I, I was okay. So I can attest to that because of our, our, our snakehead video shoot this year where I was fly fishing for snakeheads from a kayak, and it is terrible. Fly fishing from a kayak is terrible. So I know you do most of your albie fishing from a kayak, so I understand that. But I had no idea that you'd not caught an albie on fly. No. I've gotten some decent shots at them. I just haven't been able to get them to eat it. Uh, you know, I've gotten it right into the middle of them, but I think I want to go to Montauk. That seems like when that's going, that's almost automatic. Right, right. Well, per our friend Shane Babcock, those fish are made for fly. You know, <laughs> I know. I just he told me. He told me in the past. <laughs> <laughs> well, hell, man, that's a good one, that, and that's a surprising one because, man, you are so damn salty. I thought you about about did everything. No, man, that that one still very much would like to do. I'm going to move that to the top. Then. That's at the top of the list. <laughs> top of the list is an Albion fly for, for Jim. So super salty Jimmy Fee has never caught a false albacore on the fly. It kind of it kind of took me aback. I was taken aback by that. Could not quite believe that because dude catches a lot of false albacore. Had no idea. He hadn't done it on the long rod, and that is one of my favorite things to do. And um, we had a, a, a just a dog shit run of them in Jersey here in 2019. There was like 10 minutes broken up between three days when you could have caught one, um, which could be a whole other podcast on how 2019 was like, in my opinion, one of the shittiest local fishing seasons of my life, but uh, enough about me. Uh, let's call Ross Robertson because he always has plenty to say about himself. Think about this. Ross Robertson, the self-proclaimed walleye god of Lake Erie, my man, okay? What could he possibly have to brush up on, okay, other than, like, maybe like having a resolution to uh, make more people aware of his awesomeness, okay? I kid, of course. I love Ross, okay? And I... I, I was I was you want to you want to talk about being uh, taken aback, okay? Um, Ross actually throws out one of of uh, of my favorite resolutions of this entire deal, one that we should all absorb and and carry over for ourselves. Um, I am actually I I am going to I'm going to work Ross's resolution into like my next five years. Okay, it's it's not a one shot deal. Um, very surprising. Okay, but here he is, the man, the myth, the legend, Captain Ross Robertson. Ross, 
speaking? Ross Robertson speaking? Yeah. Like the one and only Hello? Ross? Hello? Hello? Yeah you, yeah, you came up as restricted. Yeah, I know, because I'm calling you on Google because I'm recording you for a podcast. Oh, hello. <laughs> See, what oh. I- <laughs> See what I did there? Google me. Uh, yeah. I've been Googled before. Right, mm. yeah, yeah. See what I just did there? What are you doing? You're not walleye fishing right now. No, we're doing the not fun part of the business thing, um, speaking with financial advisors, uh, sponsors. Um, I went and worked out today. I'm nice, hot, and sweet. Why do I talk to you, Joe? Ooh. Ooh, did you cover that stank up with a little axe, Jersey style? Yeah, save that for Kerber. <laughs> <laughs> Here's why I'm calling, and I'm excited, right? Because you just fancy yourself super good at everything. We all know that. But here's what I'm doing. I'm calling my peoples, and I'm putting you on the spot and asking you, what is your, what is Ross Robertson's 2020 fishing-related New Year's resolution? Oh, my God. No, <laughs> no, no. You will play. You will play along without giving me any shit. And, and you're going to use the audio from this. Well, I'm not going to use the visual because we're on the phone. I didn't know if you were just going to text it or if this is a your text situation. Got you. Uh, my fishing resolution. I, you know what? I actually I got one for you. Oh boy! I here we one. go. Come on. Yeah. So here's the deal. I fish a couple hundred days a year, and every day I have to catch them. Whether we're doing an episode of Hook Shots or I'm guiding someone that's on their only fishing trip of the year. Right. So I tell people all the time, and they kind of look at me like I'm crazy when I tell them the more I fish and the older I get, the worse I get, because I don't fish the conditions and I don't try stuff and I don't experiment anymore because I have to just do what I know is going to work. Right. So most of the things that I have that are outside the box or different happen by accident or maybe just a little trial and error. I want to try to definitely do some more experimentation on 2020 and moving forward um, as techniques change and just things and just, the, you know, the conditions. Like, fish are way deeper on Lake Erie now than they have been for the last 10 years, 15 years. So we're doing things different. Uh, you know what? That That is a tremendous New Year's resolution. I am shocked. I, I thought for sure it was going to be something like only wearing rain gear that accents your eyes or muscles or something like that, color-wise. That is – that's that's tremendous. I think that is a great resolution because um, I think everybody does the same thing, like especially like, like you said when you get older and you don't have as much time anymore. Like you just don't put the time into trying weird shit and you just do what you always do and that's not good. Well- no, so, so here's the, here's the, a little follow up on that. So I have clients in front of me and right now we've got 150 million fish or something according to the DNR in Lake Erie and a majority of them are between 17 and 19 inches. Guys want to catch big fish. I want to catch big fish. We've talked about this to our blue in the face. Yeah, yeah. But here, here, so here's the reality. You can't go and catch 17 to 19 inches uh, all day long. There's 150 million of them and expect all of a sudden for there to be a 10 pounder or bigger mixed right. in there. Like, right. Yeah. It, it may, it may happen one day or two days out of the 200 I'm fishing. But so you have to do things differently. The problem with that is, is when Joe Schmo that's fishing with me says, yeah, 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 I want to catch a big one. Let's go do that. And 45 minutes in, they are like, well, we haven't really caught a whole lot. So let's just go back to doing that. Right. Right. It, right. You know, right. Most guys, it's it's just like the deer hunter that says, I'm holding out for that big buck I've seen on all the trail cams, the first doe that's below his feet in five minutes into the season, kapowie. And you can't do one and do the other, and you are not going to have great success or as good of success and constant action and success if you are going to be a trophy hunter. Yeah, And with yeah. the conditions that we have, it's, it's just it's it's way more difficult than it has been even when you knew a fish to the past. No, dude, and that's I, – I, I get that totally. Like I said, that can be applied to everything. It's it's everybody wants the quality until they realize that it getting it might mean sacrificing catching anything that day. And uh, – no, dude, that's a that's a, that's a great one. I mean, I guess the ultimate question is though, how many how many clients are really going to hold to it? Or are you talking about getting out there when you don't have clients and like really drilling down some some shit yourself? Yeah, I think that um, you know, you have certain people. You you, you know, generally speaking, what you can get away with, and then you also have 
times where because the bite is so good, like don't get me wrong, we have a great problem on Erie. Like when people are like, man, I don't know if I'm going to book a trip with you this year because I don't know if we can catch a 10-pounder. It's like, yeah, I'm sorry, Bob, you can go catch 30 fish an hour. I feel really bad for you. You know, right, and right. we experienced this on, on the hook sh- the hook shots ice fishing episode. Right. Like you knew that I was legit pissed because we only had the one donkey that Ryan caught. Right. In, in, couple days of fishing and we put our we put our time in but the reality is like you said if you're into walleye ice fishing which i know you're not but if you're into that dude we straight up jacked them yep. like we had a limit in, in minutes yep so like i say to somebody I'm like are you really an outdoorsman are you really into walleye fishing are you really into fishing and you know that you're going to go on a trip and catch a limit in 15 minutes if you know you're going to be guaranteed you know 10 limits almost you know are you really even into it it goes through cycles. Like the reality is right now, a lot of those fish that were barely keepers when you were here before, yeah. and we didn't even, you know, we were catching females and they were the cold water temperature deal. So it was irrelevant. But later in the season, you couldn't keep those things that were throwbacks, illegal fish. You couldn't keep them off the line. Well, now those fish are pushing, let's say three, maybe four pounds with a female right now. In another year or two, those are straight up bigger fish that are considered trophy fish in other systems, and we're going to have a hundred and some million of them. So you just go through the peaks and the valleys, and it is what it is. But the reality is, we're still catching a ton of fish, and if that's a problem for somebody, they're probably not really into the game. Okay. All right. Well, hey, dude, that's 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 been my that's been my favorite resolution so far. Uh, what's Santa bringing you for Christmas this year? Probably a truckload of coal. Um, <laughs> He actually, he may, the truck may not have enough spring suspension, so he's probably going to use a a rail car. Um, And I know it's probably in reality going to be the same thing that you get me, a big ball of nothing. I told you that was going to be a good one, did I not? And, dude, I'll tell you what, man, Ross is right on the money with that, okay? Like, you got to stop being complacent. Right. And and we all fall into that trap. Lord knows that I do. You just keep going and doing the same shit over and over again because maybe it produces. Right. OK. And there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, we all want to catch fish. Right. I get that. But I mean, sometimes you got to be willing to sacrifice. OK. A, a day of numbers just to play around. OK. And in all genres, it makes no difference. You know, some of the best anglers in the world will tell you that. If you're out there and you're catching fish after fish on one thing, take that thing off and throw something else. It seems counterintuitive. Okay, but on like a minor level, if you're already in a good bite, now's your chance to play around. Or, you know, in a a grander scheme like Ross says, go completely rogue and do everything all day long that you wouldn't normally do. You know, forget about the things that you know work and play around with the things that you're not sure of. It can only make you a better angler in the long run. And ironically, uh, that message sort of um, parlays right into the resolution of our dear friend, uh, guide Nick Raftis from the Lehigh River. We just did a live podcast with Nick on the Lehigh a few episodes ago. Um, Every time I talk to him, he is driving. I feel like he's fumbling like a coffee and some chicken wings and like five other things in his truck while he's driving. And I think that's what was happening uh, when I called him. Uh, another another one that I, <laughs> I got caught completely off guard with the whole podcast thing. But he pulled it together, and he's got a good message here. Within this resolution, uh, let's go over to Nick Raftis. Dude. Yo. Yeah, hang on. Hey. Uh, now I can hear you. There you go. What are you doing? Hey, nothing. I'm just uh, hanging out, dude. I'm off today. Oh, you're not out on the river uh, throwing those four hundred dollars worth of Smithwick Rattle and Rogues you just bought? No, not at all, dude. Not at all. I I was. I have been. Huh. But not not throwing the rattling Rogues. Just throwing flies with clients and stuff. Gotcha. So you're, you got a day off. You're not fishing. What are you doing? Try not to die. What does that mean? I'm a little, little. I've been a little sick, dude. I just was running trips for the past two weeks. Two weeks, sick as a f-ing dog. Oh, you got you're a little verklempt. Yeah, dude. I'm all friggin' messed up right now, dude. I I lost my voice. I couldn't even talk for past week. I'm just getting it back a couple 
couple days ago. Well, you're a big talker, so that must have been difficult. I'm recording you for a podcast right now, by the way, so you know. Oh, jeez. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. And here, here's why. What's up? So I'm, call, I'm calling all my boys, throwing out a rando question. Okay. What is your 2020 fishing-related New Year's resolution? Fishing-related New Year's, okay. Uh, huh. <laughs> uh, probably, God, this is going to just be so corny, though, dude. Um, Not lay it on me. Well, I got I got a couple. Probably to get throw a little bit more gear. Okay. okay. Going into 2020, you know. More, more or less, just trying to locate fish. Right. So, sp- spend spend more time using gear to locate fish than always just trying to catch yeah. them on a fly. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Trying to figure out some extra spots and just figure out some extra spots where they might be hanging out, and uh, probably throwing you know some more full sinking lines and stuff like that, and fishing fishing the water that we generally don't fish very effectively, and just try. See if we can drum some fish up that way. That's good. No, that's that's a really good one, dude. That's a really good one because we're talking about the Lehigh, and Nick and I just recorded a podcast on the Lehigh a few podcasts ago, and we talk in that about all that slow sort of junk water that's not very fun to fish that we skip over. You skip over a lot of it, so that's a good one. Like making the effort to fish the water that you haven't been fishing. Yeah. Yep. Huh? And is that so? You know, okay, I'm, dude, I'm with that. So full sink. So you're gonna, you're, you're basically resolving to dredge more in 2020. To dredge more. Um, <clears throat> last year, I like, I was kind of looking at like temperatures and stuff. It seemed like this year was a lot colder than last year. Right. So like cherry picking some of those fish off the banks and off of shallow water was pretty effective last year. It has not been as good this year, and I'm thinking a lot of these fish are probably in their wintering holes, hanging out deep, you know, not doing much. So so the basic resolution is to not just be resigned to, to trying to target the fish in the obvious spots, but putting in the effort both with gear and, and, and fly stuff and, and, and fishing them in that, uh, in that slower, deeper water to really see what's down there. Yeah, so just trying to... Not always to just go get the low-hanging fruit. Try to get some fish that are not going to be caught otherwise. You know what I mean? Force-feeding. He, re- so, he resolves to force-feed them bastards. Force-feed them. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Real talk for a second, okay? If you are a devoted fly fisherman, okay, I don't care how good you think you are, right? I... I I will go out on a limb and say that Nick's resolution is the best resolution that you could have as a serious fly guy, especially if your game is streamers. I have, I've said this before and it's like, it's worth the reiteration. I have never spoken to a hardcore trout streamer guy who doesn't say that the best way to get better at that game is to leave all the fly gear at home for like an entire season and just go out there with spinning rods and stick baits and soft plastics because the amount that you will learn is staggering. Yet the vast majority of those same dudes also have a good laugh over the fact that they don't ever actually get around to doing it. And it's funny that that's Nick's resolution because the last time I fished with him, which was only a couple weeks ago, we did just that. We said, you know what? Like we've been struggling on the Lehigh this year. It's not been coughing up a lot of fish on the streamers. Um, we're going to go out with nothing but spinning gear, and we did it. We even had a bucket of shiners. Can you believe that? Oh my god! Like kill us, like string us up. But we did. We took a bucket of shiners and a bag full of rogues and slash baits, and we went out there. And we still did not murder fish that day at all. But we caught a hell of a lot more than we had been on streamers, and no joke, um, I caught the biggest brown trout that I've caught from that river to date on a uh, a stick bait, a uh, six to eight foot diver. Right, so this 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 lure was getting deep, and this fish just dead stopped it down deep, which tells me in that scenario, right, that fish 
wasn't chasing. It, it came right across his face and his lie, and he just, boom, just crumpled it. Point being that when stuff like that happens, it's very easy to say, ah, well, damn, see, if I had been throwing a streamer, I could have caught my biggest brown trout from the Lehigh on a streamer. But you know what? I would I would bet anything that given the depth and the current and, and the cold water and where this fish was sitting when I caught it, that that fish would have not eaten a streamer. I don't think I would have as effectively gotten a streamer in front of that fish's face at that depth. And I don't think that those fish were in the mood to shoot up a few feet or chase to mow down that streamer. And we had a lot of fun that day. And it's something that I, I want to go do more of. So that is a killer resolution for any devout fly guy, which Nick is. He's a, he's a fly guy to the max. But he's coming around and, and just seeing the power of the gear, if for nothing else than learning purposes, to help him, uh, you know, when he's got fly clients out. Terrific resolution from Nick, and uh, we're going to kick it over to another devout fly guy, my buddy Brian Kosminski, better known as Kaz, all the way up in Boyne City, Michigan. I have moused with Kaz, and uh, we did a great podcast on the Hex Hatch with Kaz a while back, and um, I got to tell you, I really love his resolution too. His resolution is another one that I promise will resonate with with every single person listening to this, because it is a trap that we all fall into, okay? And um it it it's 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 definitely fishing related, but really it just it just comes down to sort of time management. And uh I, I appreciated this resolution very much because I am I am absolutely a, a victim of of the problem that Kaz is gonna speak to here that he intends to resolve as we all should. Happy birthday, brother. Thank you, sir. How art thou? Hello. You, you got me? How are you? Good. Good. I, you? Uh, excellent. I got you. You there? I'm here. <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yeah, just making coffee. There must, is there a delay? Is there what? Is there a delay? Uh, I don't know. I don't hear a delay. Do you hear a delay? Okay. No, that's, I just didn't know if there was something funny going on. Oh, there's something funny going on. I'm recording you for a podcast right now. Oh, gotcha. What's up? <laughs> Are we tying flies? No, I'm not tying flies. I wish I was tying flies. Um, uh, yo, no, no. So here's what I'm doing, right? Uh, I'm calling all of my friends today to throw out the random question, what is your 2020 New Year's resolution for fishing? Fishing resolution. Oh, my gosh. Besides fishing with longtime friends, I didn't get to fish with much last year just because we spend too much time guiding. I want to fish new places. Okay, that's new a places, good one. New places, new fish, and new friends. New friends. So you need some new friends. Well, I don't. I don't need it. <laughs> we don't need anything. <laughs> but you know, it's I have TD this year. I bumped into so many people that I've known forever through social media. Like when we met, and it's like, dude, we got to stop making the promise. You know, yeah. Kirk Dieter, some of these guys, let's actually go out and fish this year. He's like, when I come up, we're going to hook up. Um, so we're going to, we're going to work on doing that, making all those promises that we've been doing for the past decade, saying that we're going to fish. Let's actually do it. That's a great um, one, man. I know. Cause we've been, I mean, even since, since we hung out, we've been talking about getting you out east. Yes. Yeah. Hitting the Delaware with Joe D and Joe C. Yeah. I man. would love to. That's it. Absolutely. That's a great resolution, man. Um, I'm I'm down I with that because do I do the same thing all year long. All you do is tell people how we got to get together, and it, it's so hard to get together with no agenda. Like for me, like with my job, right? It's so hard to just get together for fun. But um, yeah, I'm down. I might have to steal that resolution. That's a really good I one. I totally agree. And I what I did was got up my little black book and I started talking to people and say, "Hey, pick a date right now. Let's pick one out and let's do it." And we write it down and let's. Let's see how the rest of the year shapes shapes up. I know, man. I could fill a whole book with I, that's that's kind of my dream to just not really have a job and just have a running list of people showing up to stay at my place and fish. You and me both, brother. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> oh man! So is it a winter wonderland up there in Boyne right now? You post all these gorgeous pictures. It looks so like 
Like where you live looks so festive. You know what I mean? Like when it snows it's there, very, it's beautiful. It's, Here it's like dirty snow and salt and just fender benders. It's it's starting to look like a Christmas card. It's a Hallmark picture everywhere we go, and it's kind of cool. Um, we don't like it when it melts and we get that 40-degree warm-up and it rains, but then we can go hit the river and see if there's any steelhead hiding. Right on. Um, we're doing a lot of winter raft trips right now with the the canoe outfitters, and that's a lot of fun because it still keeps me on the water. But right now it's it's gorgeous to look outside and see pine trees with snow on them. You've been steelheading? Is steelheading good? A uh, couple. Nothing major. Um, you know, we're still always throwing streamers or... Uh, doing the nymph thing and i'll go with a couple other buddies that have spawn bags and they always clean house all over me but <laughs> you know what it's 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 so much more exciting when i see a steelhead come up and chase a streamer for me than to watch a bobber yeah you know, but I, maybe if, you should resolve if, to use some spawn bags in 2020 <laughs> you know i am, <laughs> i might learn how to pick up a center pin rod and do that in 2020 the- because I, I see the effectiveness of it. I totally know how effective it is. You know what? But that's, you can never tell me a bead is a fly. No, no, no. And that's that's a whole other argument. But actually, man, damn, dude. Like, So between fishing with friends that you say you're going to and you never do and then picking up a center pin rod, that's another – like people bust my chops so much about center pin. And I'm not opposed to it. I just haven't had anybody to show me. Like, that's another one that, like, even if you rarely use it, I feel like I would like to have that knowledge in my arsenal, but I never get around to totally that agree. one either, you know? Totally agree. And when you do it or when you go with somebody who's very effective at it, you can see a whole whole book of potential open up for you on the river because you can still take that application and put it to your fly wisdom, you know? Well, maybe that's the resolution to not to not be so uh, pigeonholed in what Close you do minded. and learn everything. I agree. There you go. That's a I great agree. one. That's no joke about the center pinning. I've been saying for years that I need to I need to link up with a really good center pinner and and learn the ways of it. And it's not like it's not like I have a lack of of friends and contacts who do it. Um, that's, that's, that was like the, the side resolution to causes bigger resolution. Uh, but, but, th- but that, that's, that's one I could easily add to my list, you know, cause I, it's, 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 it's like, it's like, it's like fly fishing. You know, I love to fly fish. I've said this before. Fly fishing should not be a way of life. It should be just another tool in your arsenal. Right? I think it's so dumb when fly guys hate gear guys and center pin guys hate fly guys, okay? We all, we all learn from knowing all these methods. And center pin is just one that I'm just completely lost on. I've never even had a center pin rod in my hands, okay? And I need to change that. And I mean that, all right? But, you know, causes bigger resolution there. You know, how many times do you bump into an old friend? Or, you know, you talk to somebody. We got to get together to fish. We got to get together to fish. And, uh, you know, how often do you really actually do it? Do you actually make the effort to put time aside to fish with some or all of these people that you would really love to share a boat with? And I meant what I said in there. You know, it's um, in my line of work, you know, you get to travel a lot and meet great people and fish with them. But there's always a work agenda. But finding the time to meet back up with these people just for the enjoyment of fishing with no agenda whatsoever, it's hard. You know, there's only so much time in a year. The weeks go by so quickly, you know. So even if you made the effort to to link up with one person, you know, I would love to have Kaz out in 2020. You know, there's nothing I enjoy more than showing somebody my waters, you know, because I see the enjoyment that people get from, from them showing me their waters. It's an awesome feeling, and we all need to make time to do that. So now we're going to give a little jingle to uh, my man, Robert Hawkins, another legend uh, on, in, on many levels, not the least of which is that the, he, he holds the world record for the biggest muskie ever caught on fly. Um, and he also had the honor of being the first podcast guest that we ever had. Episode one, Robert Hawkins. He was our dude. And when you have devout muskie guys... I, I, you know, you, you talk to like really hardcore musky dudes. A lot of times their goals revolve around muskies. Same thing with stripers. It's like, oh, yeah, I got my 40 from the surf, but I haven't gotten my 50 yet. 
Well, Jesus, what like what in the musky realm could Hawkins possibly want? He caught the damn biggest one ever on fly. So I was really curious about his resolution because I had a feeling it was not going to be musky centric and it wasn't. And it was actually really cool and has piqued my interest enough that I might have to fly to Minnesota and uh, partake in the resolving of this resolution. Yep. Hawkins, Sir Melly. What? What up, man? It was like a my phone said no caller ID. I was like, what? I know because I'm calling. I'm calling you via Google because I'm recording a podcast right now. You're you're kind of on the air. <laughs> hey, world. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you have a lull in the action in the shop right now? Can you talk for a few minutes? Yeah, I got a few minutes. Nobody's in here. Oh well, that's not good. How's the Christmas rush been? Good. Good. Yep. Yeah. Customers are notoriously late at shoppers. Yeah, they, yeah. They showed up. They showed up uh, Saturday last week, and it's been busy all week. Good, good. Yeah, I'm I'm notoriously late too. I still have like four things to buy and like two days to do it. Anyway, here's what I'm doing, man. I'm calling all my my best homies and and mm-hmm. putting, putting them on the spot and asking the question: What is your 2020 New Year's? Resolution tied to fishing, and we all know it can't be catching a world record muskie because you've already done that. I mean, there's always another bigger one out there, but <laughs> no, that's, that's, that's never going to happen again. Um, <laughs> uh, my 2020 fly fishing goal uh, is there's a, a fish here in Minnesota called a big mouth buffalo. Okay, it's a member of the carp family, right? It is sucker family. Yep. Sucker family. Okay. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And they get, uh, they're native. It's a native fish. They're super underappreciated. They get, uh, they're one of the oldest living fish in Minnesota. Um, and they are big. It's like, they look like a carp, but they don't have a down mouth. They have a, a normal mouth. Okay. And they get up to 40 to 45 pounds. Um, a buddy of mine caught a buddy of mine caught one, uh, which probably I'll send you a photo when we're done here. But probably would have been or is the would have been the current uh, world record big mouth buffalo. Um, just I'll send you a picture. It's massive. Anyways, these fish like a, they say a forty pound big mouth uh, buffalo is around a hundred years old. Really, I didn't know that they 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 had such a slow growth rate. So, so there's a, just recently there's this article published. These all these dudes were like bow hunting these big mouth buffaloes, and the DNR was like, "Yo, these fish are like ancient. Like they're your great grandfathers." And the the carp or the bow hunter guys were actually like felt bad. They're like, "Oh God, I'm like, you know." Then like a few of them are like, "Okay, we're not shooting these things anymore. These are like old school. These things have been r- around longer than your grandma has. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know. Cause that's, that's all I knew of them. I've seen some people shoot them with, with bows, but I had no yep. idea that they were like, like living dinosaurs like that. So they, I, I, yep. know, I know very little about them. We don't have them here. Like, what do they eat? Like, how do you target them compared to like the stuff you'd use for common carp? Same as carp. They eat all the same stuff, you know, nymphs and, you know, any kind of little bait fish or, you know, they're not like grass eaters. They don't eat algae. They, you know, they eat sustenance. So you fish them exactly how you fish carp, you know, with a nymph or a tiny woolly bugger or a leech or a worm, you know. Are they, um, are they harder than commons or do they, are they, are they more eaty? I'm not sure. I have, this will be my first summer, like, like actually going to look for one. Um, they live in the, you know, like the backwater, you know, like the Mississippi down yeah. up here is decently big between St. Paul and, you know, in, uh, down by Red Wing and you know, all that. It's all, it's super wide and you get all these big backwater estuaries that are like two feet deep. Uh, and that's where they're at, just in all these uh, backwater estuaries. Well, hell, man, I could get down on that. That sounds like really oh. interesting. Maybe we should film that yeah. this summer. Damn. Yeah. I could. Yeah. Big Mouth Buffalo. Wait till you see this picture, dude. It's And I'll send you the article about <laughs> this ancient. It's a cool fish. That's really a trippy fish. I can't wait to see one. Mm-hmm. 
That episode, when we do it, um, is absolutely going to be titled Buffalo Soldiers. It might actually be a whole series called Buffalo Soldiers uh, with me and Hawkins. We're going to be um, we're going to be pioneers of that. It's going to be uh, at the FF three T one thousand. Look for that. But seriously, I'm into wacky shit, and that's uh, that. I've, I never Buffalo never thought of it before until Hawkins just said it, and that's just the kind of thing that I would get on a plane for. Probably sooner than musky fishing in Minnesota again. Buffalo, dig it. That's a cool resolution, okay? Chase something that you've never chased before is is the the gist of the Hawkins uh, resolution, okay? Like all you like people out there who just go blah at snakes and bows, get out there and catch you one in 2020 and then tell me what you think about it. Now, listen, I said that uh, one of our people uh, when we called today – um, was it Taco Bell? And naturally that would be uh, Zach Hammer Miller. And like we we just had him on our last podcast. But like, you know, so I just I can't do a roundup of friends of the program without giving like Zach a couple minutes to spout off about his New Year's resolution, um, which is which is very which is different. Um it's good. It's good, it's smart. It's very smart, um, and it's 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 kind of it's kind of fishy. Anyway, uh, his audio is, is is dog shit, but you know he's talking on a flip phone, I think, or some iPhone that he bought off of the Wish app in the uh, parking lot at a Taco Bell in Florida. So it is what it is, Artie. But uh, here's Miller's resolution for 2020, y'all. Yo. What's up? You're on a podcast. What? Why? Because I want to know what the Hammers 2020 New Year's fishing-related resolution is. Oh, I thought you were calling to record me wishing you a happy birthday. No, no, no. You don't call well, them birthdays, oh, well, don't happy you? happy birthday, Grant. You are. I, yeah, I know it's not the birthday extravaganza. Uh, what my 2020 New Year's resolution is? Yeah, fishing related, please. Ah, oh, man. I, to be fair, because I'm not too trendy, I have never uh, resolved to do anything in my life. Okay. Um, <laughs> especially fishing related. But on a very real note, I, I'm actually going to take a crack at giving up the old uh, two can. The what? The old uh, can of dip. Oh, you're going to stop dipping. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna give it a crack. I'm pretty serious about it. Huh? Yeah, dude. I've seen you freak. Yeah. I've seen you freak out on boats without having dip, and that that is kind of fishing related. Yeah, no, no, no. It is. I mean, you know, any long drive to go fishing and or driving boat or dealing with customers, you know, I want to have a chew in, and you know, it, 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 it's a tough spot, but. I, I quit one time cold turkey and I gained 50 pounds and it took me about nine years to uh, take that off. So I'm a little concerned about that. But, uh, you know, I think I'm going to get, get, give it a shot because there's, there is a chance a little hammer is running around at some point. Right. I'd like to be here for at least a portion of it. <laughs> so I can teach them to uh, fish illegally the right way. <laughs> okay. Well, I know. It's, it's, not that, it's not that exciting. I know. What the f*** do you want from me? Like, I, I'm not an exciting person. I don't have exciting resolutions. I'm sitting in the parking lot of Taco Bell right now, going in to get my five dollar Chalupa box. Um, you know, this is this is life at thirty something. <laughs> I think it's a great resolution. It's a it's a better resolution than like um, I don't know, catching something you've never caught before. Oh, well, that's f***ing lame. I mean, like. Sure, I can go out there with my micro hooks and, like, I'm going to get that rainbow banded darter in the creek this year. But, like, no, because it, it, it's the unknown. You might catch something cooler than that and forget about that rainbow darter. Maybe you'll catch a pickerel and be like, wow, this micro thing kind of sucks. You know, why haven't I been pickerel fishing? You don't know, it, it, or especially with fishing. It, nothing is lined up in the cards, so to speak. Well, 
I hope that that resolution works out for you because I, I do believe in that for the health benefits. Although, uh, like I said, having seen you dipless, like in a, in a tight situation where there just was no dip, I don't know, man. I don't know. Like, are you going to be tolerable? I'm not really tolerable now. I know. So, yeah, no, I know you know. And it, it, it's going to be tough. It's going to be an uphill battle. I would say some prayers for Megan, poor Megan, who's going to have to deal with this. <laughs> but, uh, you know, she's a state. I love her very much for uh, hopefully putting up with me through this past Gen 1. I got some alternatives I'm going to uh, experiment with. No free ads. So I'm not going to mention any of the names here, but you know, j- just so I could be around to be on more of your podcast and more videos to have people hate the hammer even more than they ever have and see my face and hear my shitty voice in so many places. That is my driving force for this. So I guess, yeah, I guess it is kind of fishing related. No, it's a good one. It's a good one. And, and I also hope it pans out because while I am certainly not opposed to anybody dipping, I just got to admit, man, your, your your swill bottles just, like, make me want to hurl. That's the one aspect of dipping that I yeah, can't. Yeah, I cannot. I cannot. Like, when we hang out together they're after gross, a while, but... I'm like, dude, you left one in my car once. And, like, I... Oh, uh, you didn't open it up, did you? Yeah. Of course I didn't open it up. But, like, it was, like, under the seat, uh-huh. and I pulled it out, and I almost lost it. It was, like, a whole... I'm, I'm, I'm dry even just thinking about it. So that'd be that'd be a good thing to not do anymore. No, come on, it's not that bad. You're not a high school girl drinking out of the wrong bottle with the party, man. Like, I, there's been many, many, many people who've had it much worse than that in the uh, history of uh, chewing. I'll tell you the God's honest truth, I don't even, I don't even really have a great follow up for uh, for Miller's resolution. Um. Because like if you if you smoke or dip or or drink too much, I mean you know you should probably stop doing that if if you want to. But I'm also not one of those zealot people that like gets crazy about that stuff. You want to know why? Because if you're if unless you're like an underage kid who's doing it, right? Like if you're you're an adult and you know what's bad for you, so like you know coming down on people for smoking and drinking and chewing is stupid because that person knows that it's bad for them and that's their decision. So just leave them alone. And as I noted, anybody out, anybody listening who chews got the, got the red man chaw go cool, cool down with that. It's, 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 it's just the fucking swill bottle, man. Like I, I can't, I'm sorry. I love you, but I can't. Anyway, uh, I said that somebody else had just left the DMV, and that's our boy Tim Romano out in Colorado. Okay, not only did not only did Tim just leave the DMV when we called for his resolution, he left angry, which is pretty much par for the course. Anytime you leave a DMV anywhere in the entire country, so I thoroughly and I thoroughly enjoyed this because Tim had no idea what the hell I was doing here in terms of recording, and my boy, b- before he gets into a very nice closing resolution for us, just goes off on the Colorado DMV, and it is fantastic. Yo. Tim A. What is up? Nothing. Uh, are you are you no longer in the DMV? God, dude, that place... I swear to fucking God, I went over there with everything I thought I needed, and some. So I, I like built this trailer that got mailed to me. Uh huh. With a boat I built, and they were like, "Yeah, you got to go get a VIN verification." I'm like, "Fine, I'll go get a fucking VIN verification," which is like someone literally looking at the VIN number and being like, "Yep, that's the right VIN. Give me twenty dollars." <laughs> Did that. Went over there, and they're like, "Yeah, no, you got to go get a certified state." Pat- Control VIN verification. I'm like, of course I fucking do. Like, you can't ever go in that place without. I'm like, uh, anyways, I'm frustrated. So wait, so so the DMV people in in uh, in in Colorado are no nicer than or more understanding than the DMV people here in Jersey is what you're telling me. No. 
<laughs> because here it's like if you make eye contact, it's automatic back of the line. And if you speak without being spoken to, like they take you downstairs and you may or may not come back. Yeah, same same shit, dude. Okay, well. Like right. I, I, I made an appointment because if you're not renewing, you can make an appointment. Of course, you get there and I'm like, uh how do I get to my appointment without taking a number, right? And there's all these people in there, and I'm, like, wandering around. I'm like, uh, excuse me? Um, <laughs> if I go over there, go to touch the computer, get your f***ing number, blah. I'm like, Jesus Christ, okay, I'm sorry. Anyway, all right, well. No f***ing, yeah. <laughs> it's over. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so we're, re- so we're recording a podcast right now. I thought I'd let you know that. Um, oh, great. Okay. <laughs> So there, there's your lead-in, uh, your whole DMV thing. But here's what I'm doing. I'm just calling all my best friends, my best friends in the whole wide world, um, before the holidays, to say uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and also ask you on the spot, what is your 2020 fishing-related New Year's resolution? And go. Ooh. Uh, you know, I think, honestly, every year I say this, and I think you'll appreciate it, but I want to fish... More at home, dude. Yeah? Like, I want to fish the ditches, the the gravel pits, uh, creeks, like, 20 miles from my house. There's so much of it, and I never do it. Dude, I, I don't never do it. It's not that I don't do it, but I want to do it a lot more. Uh, you know what? Great resolution, because uh, I hear that, and it, it is a little unique to people sort of in our business, I think, because we do... We do get to travel, um, but I, dude, I have I have always said like you're not legit unless you have like home water stuff that you you cling to. So like I appreciate that because I feel the same way. Like um, with traveling now, like there's so much at home I don't want to miss that's really important. And like you said, there are so many things within like 30 miles of where I live that I've been saying I'm going to check out for years and just don't ever go do it. Well. I mean, beyond the industry stuff, dude, like, yeah, we get to travel and have fun, but, like, living where I live, I have to drive far to hit, like, you know, quote-unquote quality water. Right. There's, like, I fished a reservoir the other day that I haven't fished in 10 years. I'm like, it's 20 minutes from my house. Yeah. Why don't I fish here? Yeah. Like, it was fun. We just walked around with a thinking streamer line and whacked stalker rainbows the occasional lake trout and whatever it's fun well no that dude no and that is that is a that is an awesome resolution because i think so you live in boulder right and i think people think that if you just live in the rockies there's like blue ribbon awesomeness like all around but you make a good point because i've been to your house like you know to get to like the really good notable stuff it's not right around the corner no it's no. like a misnomer you know like it's kind of like people are like, oh, you live in the greatest fishing place ever. I'm like, not really. Yeah. <laughs> well, I even have buddies like who live in Bozeman, like in Montana. It's the same thing. It's like you live in Trout Central, but like if you really stop and think about how all that good stuff is spread out, it's not all like it's not all right there. But I, dude, I, um, dude, I feel the same way. There's so many little ponds and ditches and things that. Uh, and then, and then when I have time to go, I go to like what I've been, I, I go do the same thing that I've been doing for forever. And that's why I've like, I love snakeheads so much because they have forced me to like go out and explore. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's my resolution, man. I'm sticking to it. That That's a good resolution. So are you, is this like, has, has thinking about fishing like mellowed you a bit from your, your is, is the DMV thing like your last um, bullshit to deal with before the holidays and like family fun? Sadly, no. <laughs> it was, no. I got a lot to do in the next <laughs> however many days we have. I got three families, kids, travel, uh, work. Yeah, no, I'm not done Christmas shopping now, dude. I mean, it mellowed me a little bit. Sure. Okay. Well, you have an eggnog when you get home, and you'll be right as rain. I can't believe you just put me on the spot and recorded me, you son of a bitch. Fish close to home. Words to live by, kids. And I meant what I said when I said that, you know, you can travel, you can take trips 
to great fishing destinations every year, you know, with your buds or your family, whatever. But, you know, getting back to my own resolution about spending more time fishing local trout on foot, you know, I, I have water that I consider home water that's three hours away. So even while, like, you can technically say that's local, you know, it's an effort to get there. You have to put time aside to get there. And maybe, you know, while what I have 10 to 20 minutes away isn't as sexy or as cool, you can't ever be too good to fish what you got. You know, once you hit a point where what's in your backyard isn't worth your time, you got to assess your life and your choices. Okay. The key thing is, is, is not always where you fish or what you catch, but just that you go fish. Which is why you can still find me at the same pickerel ditches and shad runs and smallmouth streams that I've been hitting since I was knee high to a grasshopper. And by gosh, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna uphold my resolution and add some of my old stalker trout haunts back into the rotation in 2020. So this was a lot of fun, right? And I I thoroughly enjoyed putting everyone on the spot. And uh, I, I really think that all the guys had, had a pretty solid resolution on the fish front. And then, I mean, of course, we had, you know, the one from the uh, Guns, Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Bureau. But that's okay, right? There's still a good resolution, you know. There's still a good resolution. Listen, hit us on Facebook and YouTube, right, in the comments there. And tell me your 2020 fishy resolution if you have one. I am, I am very curious because I bet some of you guys do have some, or maybe you have one that you've set like Kerber uh, for the last few years that you haven't you haven't actually met yet. You haven't actually you know made it happen yet. Um, so let us know. I bet that kicks off some uh, some jaunty discussions. So hey, if you happen to be listening to this on Christmas Eve, I I uh, hope you and yours have a very merry. If you are listening to this post Christmas. I hope you and yours had a very merry and you got everything you wanted. And above all else, look, if 2019 was your year, right, you just rocked it in 2019, I hope that that, that 2020 is a follow-up that mirrors it for you. All the best, right? And if you are ready for a reset, okay, as as tends to happen for some of us, I hope that, that 2020 delivers the refreshing reset you need. You know, for me, if I'm if I'm being honest, 2019... Uh, was like a so-so year, okay? Did some did some cool stuff, no doubt. Made some great new friends, but um, you know, for me, lost a lot too. Lost a lost a lot of people in 2019. You know, so I'm I'm kind of looking forward to that reset a little bit. Not gonna lie, and uh, setting sights on some cool new projects and adventures and fun and a bright horizon. For the first year of uh, a new decade. Can you believe that? We are starting a new decade. Where does time go? God, I don't know. Huge shout of thanks, okay, to Brian Wise, Tim Romano, Nick Raftis, Robert Hawkins, Jimmy Fee, Zach Attack, Curbs, Cos, Crazy Alberto Knee, and Ross, Ross Nefarious Robertson for being such good sports for my little Spur of the Moment New Year's Resolution podcast. I love all you guys. I hope I fish with all those guys in 2020, um, I should probably call them more often uh, than than when I just need them for for a podcast. It's very self serving. Like I should just call them to say, "Hey, what's up? You want to go fish?" So uh, I'll just put that one right in the other resolution list. Uh, I'm kidding. Anyway, those are my boys, and we're gonna we're at least at least a few of us together are gonna do some badass shit in 2020. I can feel it in my plums. Anyway, happy New Year. To all you guys out there, okay, without you listening to Hook Shots and watching Hook Shots, we are nothing. And we are forever grateful to have your eyes and ears on our endless bullshit, more of which we will be heaping on you in 2020. And I will catch you guys right back here on the flip side. As always, thanks so much for listening to the Hook Shots podcast. (laughs) 